Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the effect that SHBG has on hair loss. SHBG stands for Sex Hormone Binding Globulin. Now, if you're taking TRT, this is a blood marker that you really want to become familiar with. So this is a bit of bonus material for you. So sex, sex hormone binding globulin is something that's termed a glycoprotein. So we have a carbohydrate on one hand, and then we have a protein. And when we mix them together, we get a glycoprotein. Sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG, is a carrier protein. So what it does, it's like an Uber service for our hormones. It's able to bind estrogen, testosterone, and dihydrotestosterone and deliver them to where they're needed. And it uses the highways in our body, i.e. the blood. Now, remember that testosterone is originally formed from cholesterol. And obviously, estrogen and DHT are formed from uh, testosterone. So essentially, there will be blobs or globs of globules of fat trying to make their way in the blood. This is why they need SHBG. They bind to SHBG, and SHBG uses the highways of the blood vessels to deliver these hormones to where they're needed. When these hormones are bound to the SHBG, they're biologically inactive. They can't exert their effect. Hey, 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 somebody, hey, hey sir, sir. So also SHBG binds preferentially to testosterone and DHT rather than estrogen, okay? So if there's a choice between estrogen and testosterone, that SHBG is going to grab hold of that testosterone. This is quite important because the SHBG allows the body to fine tune the testosterone concentrations. Okay, too little testosterone in men is bad, too much testosterone in women is bad, and the body can kind of like fine tune and find a balance by adjusting the concentration of SHBG. SHBG itself is produced by the liver and so when the liver gets the messages it can either upregulate, downregulate. Okay, so let's look at a scenario. So as a man ages, he has less testosterone. So with this less testosterone, there's less free testosterone, i.e. unbound testosterone, which can actually exert it, its effect on the tissues. So in this scenario, with falling testosterone levels, the body will try and compensate by producing less SHBG. Let's have a look at this diagram. I've seen this a number of times on many people's blood tests, and uh, I've always wanted to explain it with use of a diagram, so here we go. So let's look at this uh, scenario here. So we have a lot of SHBG and that SHBG is bound to testosterone. We have a free, some free testosterone floating around, but the predominant uh, a number, uh, amount of testosterone is bound to SHBG. So to really simplify things, we've got the same number of testosterone on this side and on this side. OK, now this is the uncompensated form. So we have a lot of SHBG, very little free testosterone, which is bound to this, uh, which finds its way to the androgen receptor here. This is not going to work. Why didn't you say so before? I did say so before. Now, in this scenario, when the body is detecting these really falling levels of uh, total testosterone, when we talk about total testosterone, it's bound and free. What it does then, it downregulates the noun of SHBG. So there's more free testosterone, which can then go and bind with the antigen receptor. So falling levels of total testosterone will have an impact on our SHBG. We can decrease the level of SHBG and we can increase the amount of free testosterone. So we'll get more bang for our buck. Less of our testosterone is bound and inactive and more of it is free. It's like a compensation. It's 
like a compensatory measure. OK, so we're trying to uh, basically flog a dead horse. Yeah, we're using all the tricks that uh, the body's using all the tricks that at its disposal to try and keep our testosterone levels high. Now, on the flip side, men with lower levels of SHBG are more prone to premature baldness because remember what's happening they've got less testosterone which is bound and more testosterone which is free so when their testosterone is free it's free to convert to DHT under the influence of 5-alpha five, uh, five reductase so more DHT can then act on the hair follicles so they actually found in studies on men who were suffering from premature androgenetic alopecia they had lower levels of SHBG. Also, bodybuilders, they want to increase their level of free testosterone. They don't want to have, they don't want to inject loads of testosterone and have it bound to SHBG. For bodybuilders, SHBG is the enemy. They want to, you know, they want to subdue. So the way they do it, they also take drugs such as mesterolone or proviron because what happens then proviron will bind preferentially to shbg just like shbg likes binding to testosterone in preference to estrogen uh, shbg is quite fickle because it prefers proviron rather than testosterone or dht so when someone takes proviron what they do is the shbg will bind to the proviron and kick off the testosterone so we will get more free testosterone so this is how the bodybuilders like to hack the body skin look how vascular i am brian uh, and again as a as a consequence they'll be throwing off more free testosterone which can then convert to dht and then can actually they can suffer from hair loss if they're genetically predisposed so not recommending uh, that you do that uh, but i'm just explaining the rationale behind why bodybuilders will take proviron uh, coming back to hair loss in women younger women have higher levels of shbg so there's less free testosterone available to be converted by 5 alpha reductase to dht which then can ha have a you know have an effect on the hair follicles but as women get older their shbg levels decrease so postmenopausal women have lower levels of shbg compared to younger women and then postmenopausal women will have a higher level of free testosterone which can then be converted to dihydrotestosterone and act on the hair follicles so i hope that's given you a brief explanation of shbg so on your next blood test if you're taking trt have a look out for that and see how it impacts your testosterone levels okay so you're going to have your total testosterone your free testosterone and your shbg levels you should really be getting these three markers checked to give you an accurate picture of what's happening inside your body so coming back to hair loss so now we know uh, we're filling in the jigsaw puzzle. We know about the genetics. We know about DHT. We know about the types of the isoenzyme, the 5-alpha reductase isoenzyme, type 1, type 2, type 3. Now we also know about SHBG. And all these factors combine to produce androgenetic alopecia. And But still, the picture is a bit blurry. So scientists like to call the causes of androgenetic alopecia multifactorial. So when scientists use this term, basically what they're saying is, we don't know everything yet. So I don't know. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. So now, if you like the videos, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I will answer them. Uh, in the next, uh, See so in the next video in this series of hair loss, we'll start looking at the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors, the finasteride and dutasteride. We'll have a look at them in more detail and we'll do a risk benefit analysis to see if it's worthwhile using these for hair loss. That's it for now. Thanks. Bye.